It's a show I never got, Benny Hill. For you younger people out there, England gave this guy his own TV show, and it was just all bustiers and sped up film. And singing. Singing? He did a lot of songs. A lot of songs. He does funny body songs. I would watch Benny Hill all the time, because mm-hmm. Half Naked Women, mm-hmm. you're going through puberty. Mm-hmm. And it's like, right there on PBS. This It was on the local affiliate. They would show it late at night. Mm-hmm. And there was one time, I think they accidentally played the uncensored version, and I saw boobs. Really? Right there on TV. It was a magical, magical moment in my life, <laughs> where I thought everything was possible. Welcome back to the basement for our very first unboxing of the year. We are going to thank all of our donors and we're going to open the contents of our mailbag. We touched the mail. That's how close we are. Well, it's been a long hiatus for us and we've still had people who have been generously donating to support our show and here are some of them. Betty, Michael, Ann, Mora, Andrew, Melanie, Brian, Kelsey, Alexander, Vanessa, Chris, who says, My wife Sharon discovered your show a couple months ago and has been enjoying the humor, commentary, and cats ever since. David, Abraham, Elizabeth, Thomas, Isaac, Kurt, Rodri, Lindsay, Shelby, Dan, William, uh, who says, The first of your shows I found on accident was Mac and Me. And I couldn't stop laughing. Will at London Heathrow. Yep, I'm Tom Hanks living in the terminal looking for my Catherine Zeta-Jones. Haven't seen that movie, but I guess he ends up with Catherine (laughs) Zeta-Jones. Thank you. When were you really going to watch The Terminal? I don't know. Probably in a hotel room someday. Well, the holidays are long behind us, but we still have some, what I suspect are Christmas cards, to catch up on. This one's from Shelby in Naples, Florida. She sends us a card with horses on it. Merry Christmas, it says. Oh. Hey! Uh, Merry Christmas it is. That's a little something for us. Yeah. For all you do. Shelby, Gwen, and Misty. Oh, we know them. This card is from Natalie and Kelsey with a little more Christmas cheer oh, in it. Hello there. Natalie and Kelsey say they've been watching our show for years and they, they think it's great and they hope we keep on doing it. I hope so too. Jeff from beautiful Redmond, Washington sends us this card. It's people making a snow Cthulhu. Don't you cry. I'll be back again someday. <laughs> hey guys, I send you a Lovecraft themed Christmas card every year. I'll keep sending cards and you guys keep me entertained all year with the best show on YouTube. Thank you. Merry Cthulhu Miss and have a fantastic 2017. The war on Cthulhu Miss is still being waged. I hope we win this year. Here are our postcards. We've got this one from Tessa at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Hey, that's where my sister went to college. Matt in Finland. A little yeah. mystery for you. Mystery. What's in the cage? A bottle of pills? A (laughs) circumcised penis? I'm not certain what's in this. And here's a little Nocturnal Animals postcard from Andrew and Jack at the Wages of Cinema podcast. I believe that one Michael Shannon is in Nocturnal Animals. Mm -hmm. And now the Zatoichi Report. My quest to watch all 25 Zatoichi sequels in 2016 concludes. What? Let me tell you. Finishing this challenge was a pain in my ass. Because when I was three films from finishing the series, Criterion Collection decided to start their own online channel, and they took them all down from Hulu. Oh, yeah, that's right, they did do that. Some of the Zatoichi movies are available on Netflix, but not the ones that I needed to see, so I was forced to rent them on Amazon. It's fine, I got no problem with that. And I was happy to see that the final Zatoichi film, which is not part of the Criterion Collection, collection was still on Hulu. However, by the time I was ready to watch it, it had been taken down. (laughs) Not available anywhere, can't rent it, you can't stream it anywhere. So I was forced to buy the damn thing. Right there. That's the final film. God, he's old. Tona and I watched this together on Christmas Day. Oh, Merry Christmas. There's nothing too remarkable about this other than the novelty of seeing him as a much older man. Having been made over a decade from the previous film in the series, it's kind of removed from the formula of it, and it's its its own unique animal, which is refreshing. One scene that really stood out in this that I really liked is towards the beginning, Ichi has come back to this town, could be his hometown, I'm not sure, and he's hanging out with his buddy, this old guy. And they're both just kind of puttering around the house, they're chatting about things, they're, there's some borrowed money at some point, and it's just, a, it's just a nice little scene. 
and you just watch it and you're like, oh, Ichi's an old guy now. Yep, that's you know, what old people do, hang yeah. out with their old friend and putter. Don't have much to say about the rest of the movie. Um, it was fine. Not with a bang, but a whimper does the Zatoichi challenge end. <laughs> Well, I said that this would be the final Zatoichi report, but I'm not ready to give it up just yet. So on our next unboxing, I'm going to talk about the series as a whole, and I'm going to give my recommendations as to how to view it. I have a question for you. Yeah? When I first made this resolution to do this, you said something in response to it. Holy... All 25 movies in one year! I'm going to watch one or maybe two Zatoichi movies <laughs> in the course of the next year. That is my resolution. Who will do theirs first? <laughs> Did you do as you said you were going to? No, well, I didn't. Well, I guess we find out who got to their goal first. Oh, well, well, in your face, Johnson. This, it is in my face. We will now answer some viewer questions. If you have a question for us, you can leave that for us on Facebook. Lewis Hawes writes, Any category changes you guys think should be made to the Oscars? Uh, yes. I think the sound designs should be lumped together as one, and I also think that there should be... Oscars given out to great performances that were ignored when the movie first came out. Oh. Let's say in 1995, people were like, you know who should have got an Oscar? Gene Wilder for Willy Wonka. He's perfect in that movie, and then they just kind of give him this late Oscar. They give out one a year. It's uh, announced at the show, although the person who's winning knows they're going to get it. So this way, you get rid of people getting... Oscars for movies that they didn't get Oscars for before, like how Russell Crowe got an Oscar for Gladiator for some reason, which is probably really for The Insider, is that what it's called? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a perfect performance. And then he wins for being in a Swords and Sandal movie. Matt Berkey writes, how do you make guacamole? Matt, you've come to the right person, because I am the guacamole master. Whenever I throw a party, I always make a batch of guacamole, and I always get compliments on it. People like it so much. Here's a few tips. Shelf life. Guacamole has none, so you don't want leftovers. So don't make mountains of it. It also goes a long way, so you don't need a huge bowl. This means you don't want to prepare it hours and hours in advance. You want to prepare it as the last thing. You can do it right before your guests arrive or even as they're arriving, because if you have, if you have everything prepped, making guacamole takes about five minutes. Your ingredients, ripe avocados, but not too ripe. They should be spongy, but you shouldn't leave a fingerprint. Then they're overripe. Minced red onion, minced hot pepper, I prefer serranos, lime juice, salt, diced tomatoes, and my secret ingredient, which we'll get to later. That's all you need. Don't add anything else. Guacamole is a simple dish. Keep it simple. And don't even think about using that blender. You're not going to need it. All you need is a fork. You mash up the avocados, you start adding your ingredients. You're eyeballing it. You're salting and tasting as you're doing this to get the right amount of salt in there. Careful with the lime juice. It's easy to overdo that. Cilantro is optional. When I use it, I use it sparingly. You mix all of it together. You're not pulverizing with that fork. You're just folding things in. You want to keep it nice and chunky. And then you add my secret ingredient, which is cumin. It's that little spice that makes Mexican food taste so good. A little bit of that, it counterbalances the butteriness of the avocados, and it just gives it a real nice snappy flavor. You've tasted your guacamole, all the flavors are balanced, then you're going to fold in your tomatoes, and then you might want to do a final salt adjustment, and you're ready to go. You're not going to want to serve in that mixing bowl, though, because that looks messy. Take a rubber spatula and put it into your serving bowl and uh, enjoy. I'm a salsa man myself. You shut the hell up. Now, I, I will say that Matt is a tremendous cook. Uh, it's always a pleasure to eat what he has to make. I don't like guacamole. It's nothing personal to him. It's just against avocados. And now, some packages. Hey! Let's see what we got here. Sealed for freshness. What is in here? Somebody take the hell out of this. Ooh, it's a box of stuff. Box of stuff. I like stuff. This is from Nick in Tucson, Arizona. We've got a button here. Ooh, wooden tooth records. Prickly pear cactus candy. Ooh. I think I've had this stuff before. It's really good. I've been to Tucson. I have driven through Tucson. And a cassette tape. Whoa. The Decline of Western Civilization to the Metal Years. We watched that in our first season of the show. That's uh, it's quite the movie, quite the documentary. We got a couple of uh, stickers for Wooden Tooth Records. Ooh, you can have one of those. This guy's trying to sell us on Wooden Tooth here. That's all that's in the box, which is a reconverted, perhaps blue ribbon uh, box. Reduce, reuse, recycle. What do you got in that tube? I don't know. From Colby in Putney, Vermont. Our good buddy, Paul, 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 Colby. Candy. And some other candy that also looks like it might be maple. 
Let me, let me show it. Sometimes I forget. People are sending us regional treats. Chocolates of Vermont. Well, ho, ho, Yum. ho. Postcard. Green Mountain Orchards. Finest Vermont apples. We have two movie posters. Raising Arizona. And Boogie Night. Nice. There we'll, you go. We'll be fighting over those. As another Paul Thomas Anderson movie said, there will be blood. Colby and Odell wish us a happy holidays, and Colby says he's been having writer's block lately and has had a hard time continuing his book. Well, best of luck with that, Colby. Remember, there is no such thing as writer's block. You get in there and you write. As Garrison Keillor said, there's no such thing as dentist block. Why is it writers who claim to have this? And also, I forget if it was Hammond or Chandler who said, when all else fails and you can't think of anything else, have a man rush into the room with a gun. Colby, if you haven't checked it out, actually, Stephen King's writing book. Yeah, I'm writing. It's an excellent book, and um, that might help inspire you. Yes. Oh, it's bent, but I got it anyway. I suspect this hmm. here is a record. Why would you think that? From Adam in Montreal, Quebec. Oh. I've been to Montreal and went there on my honeymoon. With my I, wife. I haven't been there because I wasn't invited. A record by the band Harmonium? Or by the instrument Harmonium. Ooh, I think this is Krautrock. What? Yeah, it looks like Krautrock to me. German? Har Harmonium. It's written in German, yeah. There's a second one hidden in there. With some money attached to it. What? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this guy watches beer and board games. It's Eddie Money. <sighs> Take me home tonight. I can't stand any money. You can't? I'm going to be giving this to you. Oh. <laughs> Come on. All right. He can be my little baby. He did attach some money to the Eddie Money album. Thank you for that. Oh, Harmonium is a band from Quebec. They just write things in German? Oh, you know, this isn't written in German. It's written in French. May we? Such an idiot. I speak French. I speak a little French. <laughs> <laughs> this package was from Adam and Julie. They say they've watched every episode of our show, and they always look forward to it. Good. That's from our buddy Vincent in San Marcos. I predict postcards and perhaps a patch. Yep. Postcards and a patch. <laughs> ah, yeah! And here's a boat. Those look like some vintage can... postcards. Yeah, a lot of them from Norway. Oh, wait. The, uh, this is... There you go. This is the Gaudi Cathedral in uh, Barcelona. Oh. I've seen it. This is where Mumford and Sons are from, this town. It's Mumf. <laughs> Thank you, Vincent. This is from Mitchell. In... Mitchell! He said he was glad to see that we were watching some anime films. And he said that he included a flash drive with some of his favorite anime movies. Mitchell, I have some bad news for you. When I got this letter, um, it had been torn about halfway open and there was no flash drive in it. Oh, so no. I'm sorry to hear that. It's um, fallen into the hands of the Russians. But he's written some uh, synopses of some films and shows that he likes and uh, we're going to check those out. Hey, did you bring one of your movie poems to read to us? No, I forgot. Oh, come on. You need to remind me. Everyone's of waiting with bated breath. I <laughs> just had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I have other things to think about right now. All right, we'll bring one next time. All right, I'll see what I can do. Here are the rest of our donors. Thomas, who says, one of the best shows on the internet. <laughs> Kempson, Stephanie, Jeroen, Analog Robot, Eric, Kyle, Anthony, Sierra, Jared, Philippa, who says, wishing you and your families a prosperous 2017. Ooh, prosperous. I like that sound. Therese, Emily, Joe, Sean, Stefan, Simon, Malcolm, Benjamin, Luke, Maurizio, Graham, Rebecca, Robert, Danielle, Sarah, Jonathan, Corey, Pierre, Hughes, Lewis, and Skyler, who is a local Madisonian and said that one time she was volunteering at the Broom Street Theater and she saw you. Really? I wonder what show it was. Say hi the next time, Skyler. I always like to meet people who like the show. If you would like to donate... <clears throat> to support our show like these people have your name right off on this show you can go to welcome to the basement show.com and click the little paypal donation button it's as simple as that ah, gross yes let's open the rest of those packages mystery box box fish and <laughs> sea greens protein from the sea uh we have a dvd <laughs> uh this is a movie called <laughs> Yes. Movie, TV show, I'm not sure which. It looks like it's been to a number of film festivals. There is no note. I don't know who this is from. Thank you. Possibly it's some sort of curse that they're passing on. But the Crenshaw Tribune gives it four stars. The Crenshaw Tribune. <laughs> hey, there's a record here. A record-shaped box. Nice. Carolina Beach, North Carolina. We have a record here. We don't know who it's from. It might be from T.A. Epley. I don't know. T.A., let us know if this is from you. What is it? The Hotelier, or Hotelier called Home Like No Place Is There. 
I have no idea what that is, yeah. but I will listen to it. This is from Jason and Valerie. Valerie, one of my favorite monkey songs. And Jason, one of my favorite Argonauts. Postcard from Texas. Hey, howdy. <laughs> Texas burns my hands. Oh, I think someone wants our autograph. Oh, and they, they can... want us to send it back to them. Oh, self-addressed stamped envelope. Yes. Don't sell it on eBay. <laughs> because it won't make you much money. <laughs> And we've got some wrapped gifts. This one is to me. This one is to Cecil and Ernesto. I'll open it for them. This one is to Craig. Oh, we even got one here for Tona. Hey, that's good to know. Come hey. get it, babe. What? Oh, Turn the bands. Bag full of toys for the cats. Oh, this is Lawrence Block's A Walk Amongst the Tombstones, which is now a major picture starring Leslie... Neeson. <laughs> Liam Neeson. Liam Neesoms? Liam Neesoms. That's my shit! <laughs> Tona, what do you got? I have Indian Jewelry of the American Southwest. Someone's been yes. going to your website. Yeah. Hey, thank you. And I've got what I suspect is a DVD. Ooh. Oh, it's another Liam Neesoms jam. Really? A Walk Among the Tombstones. Wait a minute. Is this... Did Liam Neeson send this to us? <laughs> the donors have been thanked. The boxes have been unboxed. And so it is time for us to bid you a fond farewell. But not for too long, because the next episode of Welcome to the Basement is coming out this Friday. And the next episode of Unboxing is coming out the Friday after that. So it is the Valentine's Day episode. Mmm. Romantic.